Um, we were talking about, however, uh, how they have different kind of a coat in winter and summer. And uh, one of the things that is neat to be able to show is the um, animal's whole body, which looks in some ways a little bit like a goat, um, but also when you see the animal in its winter coat, you can see how much of a difference it makes, that thick fur, especially in the neck and head area compared to the rest of the body. And they actually look really interesting that way when, when, when you see the whole animal in its winter coat. And so what I'd like to do is do also a quick drawing on the side here, since we've got a lot of paper space left here, of the animal sort of just standing in its whole, um, the whole animal, uh, the, the whole body of the animal, basically. <laughs> and um, so to do that, we're going to get another um, a bit to do here. And this should be one. I am going to just turn on the layer here. And, okay, good. I'm going to uh, go to the whole animal. And we're going to just, this is going to be quicker. Um, but now that we have some idea about what the head looks like, we want to see how it looks like when the whole animal is put together. And uh, so here we go. So I'm going to switch back to, again, your light color. Um, in my case, it's going to be the red colored sort of ink or digital ink, I guess. And we're going to go to the other side of this page. So, right, we put the the portrait here. Or if you have filled up your page, you can always grab another page and maybe make a new image of it. Uh, the main thing is keep in mind where on the page we're drawing this. And so we're going to start with kind of a potato shape on the left side. This. The first piece that we're going to draw with this is going to represent the animal's uh, abdomen or the area around the, the stomach and the uh, the, the guts and so on, so the, the, big, the big belly of the animal, basically. So yeah, it's a big rounded part. Uh, and they have a really nice bulky body, right? Um, and, um, uh, well, yeah, how do they, um, how is it that they, um, do they have, uh, I guess, like fermentation happening inside, like with, um, with other types of, um, of, of ruminant animals, I guess, where they, when they, and they would have then these, these symbiotic bacteria in them, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's must be. So they have large, large um, uh, stomach uh, chambers um, to house these these special kinds of, of bacteria that help them to digest the cellulose in the, in the plants that they eat. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to gain a lot of um, nutrients from them. And so this is why a lot of these antelopes and other uh, um, herbivorous or plant-eating uh, hoofed animals have these large bulky bodies uh, because they have to have a lot of space so yeah. that's going to be the abdomen sorry go on yeah i also wanted to add that uh an interesting fact that uh cygus usually when they give birth they give birth to few animals uh two at a time for the most part sometimes three and only during the first year of pregnancy they might give birth to one until so again like they, they need uh to have at least three males to have some capacity to be able to uh, bring up at least two um, little cygus inside and they would be able to give birth every year. So um, that's, that's, uh, right. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a lot of work, but that, that's well, they why they're really, so resilient. That's actually a good point too. Right, exactly. You need space for, for to be able to have uh, two babies at a time. Um, and um, they're, um, they remain pregnant for was it seven, five months? Month. seven months seven months seven months yes. wow so that's impressive actually so they have to hold on to babies for a good long period of time for them to grow inside them um and then uh and, and so this is actually really nice and this is actually a good point too right because they reproduce so quickly potentially that's very important especially when they under when they have like for example in 2015 right there was that very massive die-off and so they lost so many numbers um and and they're recovering from that now? Uh, yes, they're recovering from it right now. Uh, in fact, the number of cygus uh, came back to what it was uh, before the die-off. Uh, the die-off has been quite massive and we lost 65% of the global population of the cyga, uh, which is 
a lot, uh, especially if you imagine that it all happened uh, in a very short period of time. So we're talk talking about a uh, few weeks, really. Um, and so because, again, they, they have this adaptability uh, to give birth to a few calves at a time, uh, it allowed this animal to be quite resilient and bounce back uh, at large numbers. Well, that's actually really nice to hear. Uh, it, it's 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 really great to hear stories where 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 a, a species that is so endangered, critically endangered in this case, is able to bounce back from certain events like that so well. So that's a good reason why they're they're able to use uh, their highly um, their their impressive ability to reproduce to do that. So I'm going to add now the next part here is the the shoulder area. It's kind of another little oval shape coming in the front here. Like that. So that's going to be where the, the shoulders are basically. The neck uh, is going to be kind of another oval and it overlaps with the other ones as well. So you don't actually have to draw in the full oval if you don't want. Um, it just makes it easier to visualize, but so it kind of go like this. I just draw in the back of it dotted. It's the, really the front part that's important because it's the neck. Now the head here, similar to what we did before, but this one um, I'm going to make in kind of like a, a upside down teardrop shape sort of or on a teardrop shape on its side. The reason is because that part in the front there is going to be the big bulging snout and then underneath here is where the mouth would be sort of underslung and then the jawline back here. And we'll see afterwards how that works. There's going to be a bit of it that we're going to pull out. Um, the horns again, now we're seeing it from a little different angle. Now we're seeing the animal more from the side than the one that we drew before. So these horns are going to look closer together. And so we're going to do exactly the same thing as we did with the other one in drawing both horns at once using this funny kind of bent shape to show that the way that the horns are, are twisted. That's both horns together in one shot. And now we're going to separate them by adding the, the inner part of or the front part of the horn that's near us like that. And then the inner part of the horn that's on the other side of the animal, like this. I find the drawing of them together like this helps to keep them in the right position with respect to each other though. Okay, so the next part is the legs. The legs are actually um, not very large. So there's going to be one front leg here. It's Think of like a table leg in this case, <laughs> sort of as an analogy. Um, the, the, the hind legs have these powerful muscles on the, the upper parts of the thighs, um, which is important for them because they can run really, really fast, right? Yes. Uh, in fact, they can run as fast as a car. So it can be uh, as fast as uh, 70 miles per hour or 110 kilometers per hour. Amazing. That is amazing. So, I mean, that that's, you know, goes to show that how, how these, these legs aren't extremely long, but they can really propel them very fast. Yeah, well, they have to run away from the predators and their predators are wolves. And for obvious reasons, you, you better run fast. <laughs> no doubt. And that's actually a, a, amazed me. Uh, and as we do this, I'm adding the back parts of the, the leg here. You can just kind of follow along. But What's amazing is how fast they can run. They're, they're similar speed as, as pronghorn um, in North America or in many of the gazelles of Africa. Um, and those ones uh, evolved in response to predators like cheetahs that can actually um, go to those speeds. Uh, for example, in, in parts of North America, there used to be a cheetah species um, uh, that, that evolved there. And some of the ideas are that the pronghorn may be uh, are able to run as fast as they do at similar speeds because of the pressure from these North American cheetahs. Um, but um, it's interesting that that the Saiga have also uh, evolved to, to be able to run at this incredibly high speed. So yeah, I'm adding that. Uh, in fact, there were evidences that uh, we also used to have cheetahs in Central Asia. Ah, okay, so there you go. Yeah, that's interesting. So that actually makes sense then too. And so this is neat when you look at animals and you see some things that like makes you wonder why is it that it's like that? Sometimes what we're seeing is we're missing parts of the picture today and that there were at some points in the past interesting uh, elements of their environment that 
that are the reason why they are the way they are today. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, I'm adding bits of the, the legs. There's the, the front hoof and the hooves are cloven. They have two, like two toes basically on them that are visible um, that hit the ground. And there's other toes um, that are little knobs left over. Um, that, that's the little knob that we're seeing on the front foot there. There's also a, a little bit of a, a line that comes up here from the back of the, the animal's elbow, which the elbow is way up on, near the top, near the animal's um, torso. And then on the back foot here, again, you can see the, the hooves and it's, it's cloven or, or split um, to two toes. And then there's that little knob in the back, which is another toe. Okay, and then it also has a tail, right? And so these guys have a little bushy sort of tail here. And the reason why we have some of the, you'll, you'll see that the, the, the proportions of this animal are such because it's, it's, it's a winter coat as well. So especially around the neck and the head, you can see that it's gonna be thicker. Um, I'm just gonna add in the ear as well. Now we've done ear on the porches, it's gonna be similar, but it's a little thicker because again, we have more fur, it's winter coat. That's the ear on our side. Uh, and then there's that little opening between the, the furs that are coming inward. So you see like that. Okay. The eye, um, I'm just gonna start with the eye itself and not the orbit this time. And it, it starts right here. It's a little kind of a lemony shape like that. In front of the ear. And it looks kind of funny now, but that's because we haven't added yet the, um, the uh, part of the, the front of the forehead. But the orbit around it, again, you have these this lines that kind of come around it like this. That's the big bony part that, that um, the eye is inside. And then there's that upper part of the eyelid as well above the, the actual shiny part of the eye. The mouth, again, and here you see it's it's very clearly it's it's underneath and behind the tip of the snout. Um, it just just really looks interesting that way. Now we're going to add that line at the front of the forehead that helps to define the shape of the the, the bulging uh, muzzle. And uh, there's a bit of a, a bit of fur in the front, kind of like my my hair sticking out a little bit here. Uh, and so it comes out from the front of the horns. There's a bit of a bulge here with a bit of fur and then down and then comes out forward like this. So when you're finished, you're actually gonna remove this line a little bit here, a little line through it when we put the detail on there. And so this is gonna show that little bit of a bulge of fur in the front of the... Now, the uh, animal's back connects those, those, um, those ovals that we did. So starting at the top of the back, we're gonna make this line that kind of connects these a little bit to show that the back of the animal and the top of the neck to smooth it a little bit. Like that. And then there's uh, large muscles in the front of the legs where they connect with the chest um, that uh, help it to move its legs as it's running as well. And so we're just gonna add a bit of a bulge down here. These are pectoral muscles. And so they help the legs to move uh, forward and inward, to propel the animal along. Uh, we also have some legs on the other side, of course. Uh, we can add these. I think that um, just to save on time right now, we're going to go with these, uh, the legs on our side and leave those at that. And, and then we know that there's another pair of legs behind it, but we're looking at it from the side. So one pair of legs is behind the other. And I'm just going to skip that just to make sure that we're well in time still. And um, the last thing that we need for the guide shape here is a few facial details, such as, again, those funny little creases on the snout um, that are still visible, the, those cross bars or the, 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 the pieces on the horns, the ribs on the horns, those little ridges, that. I imagine there's a, a set number of these and maybe they increase as the animal grows, as you said, the horns grow in size, or I'm not sure how that works, but that must be yeah, I guess you're right. It makes sense. Um, I can say for sure with the horns, uh, but also with the coat, I, I think it's quite lively. Interesting, interesting. No, it's 
neat, neat animals. They're so neat. So this is it. We have now the guide shapes. The one thing that we want to do now is to add, to draw those lines together like we did with the previous portrait. And now I'm going to switch to black and you can switch to either a darker color or a heavier line or a different kind of um, implement like maybe a pen. And this way we'll be able to tell these lines apart from the previous ones more easily. So I'm going to start up here at the horn um, and then the nearer horn again. It's a little bit of bumpiness again because remember all that those ribs try to put little bumps in your cross lines are. And then the top, the horns kind of, they kind of point inward a little bit. They point a little bit toward each other at the tip. And more bumps along the edge here. This is the horn that's nearest to us, and so it's in front of the other horn, even more so than in the other drawing that we did, because now it's from a more side view, and that's why they kind of overlap each other. So I'm just doing the other horn now, and the tip kind of points inward, sharp little tip, and it kind of comes down again, and as we go toward the bottom, those ribs become larger on the horn. Like that. You can add, again, a little bit of a uh, little squiggly line where the fur meets the bottom of the horn. Yeah. And now we're going to move forward on the forehead of the animal. And so there is this little bunch of fur here that comes down and then it continues along the top of that snout, that really enlarged nasal area. Now you see this, the nose is not, the nostrils are not visible here. The reason that I drew it like this in this case is to show Again, how flexible and movable that, that nose is. And so some of the time they can actually be pointing it downward like this. And so when they're pointing downward from this angle, you wouldn't actually see those open nostrils like we saw on the portrait that we drew. So here you just kind of draw a slightly curved line like that. And the, you see there's that little bit of a crease, this little dotted line up here again to show that there's a large sort of chamber of the nasal cavity. It's separate from the, the area where the mouth is. The mouth comes up again like this. And then the chin, not much of a chin there. And then the jawline comes back and we can kind of stop at the, the back of the jaw and then you don't have to draw all the way up toward the ear because it's a bit of a smoother connection there. The eye, we'll just do it exactly like we set up the guidelines lemon kind of a shape and then there's the eyelid which again is sort of a dotted line and again you can make sort of a not too heavy line or a dotted line for the that that bulge of the, the orbit uh, that bulgy part of the skull where that houses the eye the ear will outline the ear just like we did before with the guide shapes and again remember there's that sort of the area where the fur the long fur meets toward the center of the ear can fill out. Now here's the part where we go to the neck and this shows again how thick the animal's fur is. So we're going to connect the head with the neck and there's a bit of a smoother connection here. And at the bottom of the neck, at the throat, you can actually make that a little bit, the line not too smooth, a little bit more squiggly, just to show that there's a long fur that, you know, it's not terribly clumped, but it's a, a little bit not completely smooth because you can see a little bit of that furriness. And it connects up with the chest here, those big pectoral muscles. That's the bottom of the, of the neck. Then at the top, we're going to go to the behind the horns and, and continue backward and kind of smooth it along this line that we drew that smoothed those circles all, all the way along the back of the animal. And actually here, at the very back where the thighs begin, you can kind of draw it a little, very slight bit of a corner turning downward, not completely smooth, uh, not completely round. And continue it with the tail. Tail just continues from here and goes down. It's a little bit of a bushy tail like that. Very much like a goat's tail, I guess, in many ways. We used to have goats. When I was uh, growing up, we raised goats on our acreage in the in rural, rural area. And so we had, um, I, I, I got to see a lot of goats. And so these guys um, remind me of goats in some ways. 
yeah they should they they have the same height as goats pretty much and very similar structure so oh and and it's really adorable the 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 babies um and i'm just going to continue the leg here meanwhile the babies how um i was reading in the material that sent that um they and and um, also some additional references that they once they're born they they hunker down in the grass and they go flat and and to hide from predators and and it's just so neat to see that they look adorable just laying there <laughs> yes they look absolutely adorable and then it it's harder for predators to spot them just because uh, their color perfectly matches the background. Uh, and another cool thing about the babies is that they are actually able to run already after two days wow. since they're born. And they're able to run very fast, um, faster wow. than uh, human babies for sure. That's impressive. It just goes to show how wonderfully they are adapted to such a life as sort of this nomadic species of um, of antelope that moves around a lot and they migrate right large distances yeah uh definitely very large distances and in fact they're migratory species so uh going from place to pl place is their lifestyle uh, and they do it because of the climate situation because of the weather um in order to find better pastures uh or in order to give birth that's interesting too and so that that's really neat how um, some animals can actually respond to changes in their environment, not by hibernating, as some of them do, but to moving around to different places that have better conditions for them. Exactly. So many different ways uh, how to survive differences in climate. There we go. I'm just putting in the last line here at the back of the, the back leg. Uh, and now we have, and I actually put in a few little lines here, little dotted lines along the neck near the back of the neck, near the front of the body to show a little bit the separation of the neck from the body. Um, I think we've got pretty much everything we need on our animal here. Uh, we can fill in the eye because right, that's also dark. And if you want to add a little bit of a light spot to show the reflective nature of the eye, that's doable. Oh, and I forgot to put in a few of those little accordion kind of little grooves on the snout, just if I reduce the brightness of or darkness of the guidelines had on the other one. Okay, I think that's it. Now, if I were to uh, reduce the, the darkness of those guidelines, or if you want to erase out partly some of the, the guide shapes that we drew, this is what's going to happen. So I'm going to reduce that darkness. And presto, it changes into a drawing of a saiga. In winter coat, you can see here the neck is thicker relative to the other drawing that we did. Um, it, it looks less skinny, it looks fatter, thicker, bushier. Um, and this is what happens, right, in winter. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it looks amazing. And it's so interesting how you can put simple lines together, or like simple shapes, and all of a sudden you have the saga, even two sagas. <laughs> and that's it, exactly. And, and this is actually very much like, I mean, it, it's, it's useful to do this as a, as a teaching tool, but also, Keep in mind that as an artist, as professional artists, we kind of do this in our minds all the time anyways, that when you see something that we want to draw, um, we, ha we tend to break it down mentally into simpler shapes to try to, and, and fit those together and try to really comprehend only those simple shapes at a time, um, a few of them at a time, to make it easier for us to see how uh, a complex animal uh, fits together. Um, and so that really helps in, in, in real time um, when we're doing this as well. Yeah, and because at first you look at it and it looks scary because you don't know where <laughs> to start, but... <laughs> exactly. 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 But, but you, you made it, it so down. simple. <laughs> well, this is good. And, well, there you go. So that, that's, that's our Saiga. Uh, and you can... Now you have pictures that you can color as well. You can sign it. Um, uh, and then you guys are going to um, encourage people to, to uh, show their images as well, right? Yes, absolutely. In fact, I almost finished my painting. So oh, I'll ask for your opinion in this case. Okay. There we go. Oh, excellent. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. Uh huh. And there we go. Oh, that is amazing. That's great. That so, looks really, really good. Perfect. Such a good explanation. And Excellent. like I said, 
everything was super simple. So I think, yes, uh, it's a fantastic masterclass. I think okay. so many of us, like our communities will find it very useful. And, and I enjoyed that, learning things. Yeah, and now that we also have uh, coloring sheets, it's fantastic because we can make different colors and we can just make um, more like graphical drawings. So thank you so much for that, really. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much. It's been fun. Uh